Webflow makes it easy to go live. Now let's build daily interaction number 25. Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today we're gonna build what I like to call a cursor follow on mouse move. So here as I move my cursor, we have this element following the cursor. Um, so this only takes a few steps, but there is something that we will cover. If you notice when I hover over mouse over move mouse, the circle disappears, it kind of scales in, and then when I hover out, it come it scales back up. Uh, so this is important because this element does block uh, link blocks or does block elements behind it. So you want to have it disappear so that you can interact with links or other elements on the site. All right, and this was inspired by this website here, uh, cuberto.com, where he has this cursor follow on mouse move with the circle here. And notice the circle disappears as well when we hover over different uh, elements. Uh, this is a great website in general. He has a lot of great animations and interactions that we might cover in later uh, daily interactions. All right, looks good. So this is what we will be building today. To view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is 25 and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D dash 25 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 25. So the first thing I'll do here, first we're gonna add all the elements and then we'll add the interaction. So here I'll add an element. I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D-25 section. I'll set the height to 100 VH so it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to background. I'll set the background color to black. Then I'll scroll up to the top and for the display setting, I'll set it to flex and justify center and align center. So anything I place within the section will be in the center. So we want to start with that element or the, the circle. We want to start it in the center so that when we move it, we're moving it uh, 50 viewport units, either up, left, down, or right. Okay, so if we go to the demo, this uh, circle starts initially at the center and then we move it uh, a certain amount of viewport or 50 viewport units in either direction. Um, so let's go ahead and add the element. Um, and I have this viewport units reference that we'll use in a second. Or actually, let's let's look at it now. So let me click refresh. So it starts in the center. And so the circle is moving up negative uh, 50 VH on the Y and 50 VH on, yeah, down on the Y. And on the, on the X, it's moving negative 50 VW or viewport width. And uh, when we go to the right, it's moving 50 viewport width to the right. So yeah, we have viewport height, which is vertical and viewport width, which is horizontal. Okay, so we're in the section. So let's go ahead and add an element. So I'll add a div block and I'll give it the class name D-25 uh, circle. And for the circle, I'll give it a width of 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And I'll give it a border. Yeah, right down here in border. I'll give it a solid border and I'll set it to white and we'll make the border about three pixels and we'll set the uh, border radius to 50%. So to get a perfect circle, it just needs to be half the size of the square. So you can either enter in half the size in pixels for, yeah, so in this case it would be 25 pixels or you could enter in 50% to get a perfect circle. And the other thing I wanna do here for the circle is set it to a position of fixed and yeah, that's all I have to do, do there, set it to fixed, so that if the website has scrolling space, this circle will always be within the viewport of the site. Yeah, the circle will always be in the viewport. All right, so we have the circle, we have it set to fixed, uh, we added a border radius, um, so now we can add the interaction. So here I'll go into interactions, 
and it's going to be a page trigger interaction. So here I'll click the plus and it's going to be a mouse move in viewport. So when the mouse moves within yeah the viewport or within uh, the browser there, um, something is going to going to occur. So here I'll select yeah mouse move in viewport it says animate while the mouse moves over the viewport along the X or Y axis, no touch uh, support. So here I'll select it. And on mouse move, we're going to play a mouse animation. And I'm going to add a new mouse animation. So I'll click the plus and I'll name this D-25 mouse move. Um, so here we have the mouse X action. So it's the horizontal actions and the mouse Y actions. So 0% uh, the mouse is all the way to the left of the viewport. 100% the mouse is all the way to the right of the viewport. So on the X axis, we're going to work with viewport width because it's horizontal. And on the uh, Y axis, we're going to work with uh, viewport height or VH uh, to move yeah, the element uh, vertically. So yeah, X is VW and Y is VH. So here we can see it. Horizontal VW, vertical is VH. Okay. So at the 0%, I'm going to move that element. So I'm going to add a new timed action. I'll say move. And I'm going to move it on the X axis, negative 50 VW. So we can see that element goes all the way to the left. And whenever you add um, a first movement, um, it also looks for the last movement. So Webflow automatically adds um, a movement at the 100% mark as, as well. So I just have to select it. And when the mouse is all the way to the right, we're going to move it 50 VW. So it's all the way to the right. And we want to do the same for the Y. So yeah, if I preview now and I move my mouse uh, we, uh, left to right, we can see that that circle follows it. So now on the Y, I'm going to add a move timed action. And on the Y axis here, I'm going to move it uh, when the mouse is at 0%, when, when it's at the top, we're going to move it negative 50 VH, not VW, VH, because we're working with the viewport height here. So I'll enter VH. We see that element goes to the top and then at 100% when the mouse is at the bottom, we're going to move it 50 uh, VH. So it moves down 50 viewport units. So yeah, the reason we're using 50 is because 100 viewport units is the, f yeah, 100, yeah, VW is the full width of the, the browser and 100 VH is the full height of the, the viewport. So by setting it to 50, we're, uh, we're moving that element in, in either direction. Okay, so that's all we have to do. So for the X, uh, when it's all the way at the left, negative 50 VW, when it's all the way at the right, 50 VW on the Y, when it's all the way at the top, negative uh, 50 VH on the Y axis. And when it's at the bottom, we move the element 50 VH. So yeah, we're working with the mouse movement here in the viewport. All right, so now when I preview, we can see that that element follows the mouse anywhere we move it. Perfect, and we can change the element, like we can go into the circle, and I can do things like, um, you know, give it a solid background, so it's like a solid circle. I can change the width and the height to like 15 by 15, so we just have this little dot following the cursor. I can also remove the, the mouse cursor, so we only have the dot. So to do that, I can go into the body, Go into styles and uh, for the cursor, I'll set it to none. So now we only have a dot appearing for the cursor, which is kind of cool. It could add a really interesting effect to the site. Um, the only thing you want to be aware of when working with this is uh, when working with links, right? Because this is actually an element, so it will block other elements that it is in front of. So as an example, let me add a button to the section. So I'll select the section. I'll add an element and I'll add a, a button here. I'll name it D-25 button and we'll link this button to, uh, let's link it to webdevforyou.com. So I'll say webdevforyou.com and let's preview and I can't click it because this, uh, this circle is an actual element so it's blocking the cursor. It's blocking the button actually so I can't click on it. So this is where we want to, uh, this is where I added an, uh, an interaction here so that the element kind of disappears when we hover over this button. So let me style this button a bit. Um, yeah, let me go in here into the button. 
Um, I'll just make the background transparent and uh, let me click into the text. I'll say, uh, yeah, web dev for you. And um, we can give it a border, kind of give it a bit of styling here. And then I will add some padding. So I'll hold down shift, make that button a bit bigger. So, all right, so there we have the button. And what I want to occur is that when we hover over this button, I want the circle to scale to zero so we don't see it. So with the button selected, I'll go into interactions. I'll add an element trigger interaction. So I'll click the plus and I'll select on mouse hover. We're going to start an animation. We're going to add a new timed animation and I'll say D-25 mouse in and I'll select the circle. And when we hover over the button, we're going to scale the circle. Yeah, so I'll add a timed action of scale and we're going to scale it to zero. All right, and I'll add an easing of like ease and 0.5 seconds is okay. Then I'll close this here and on hover out, we're going to start an animation. I'll duplicate the mouse in, select it here. So we have D-25 mouse in, I'll rename it to mouse out. When we mouse out, we want that circle to come back to a scale of one, which is its original size. So now if I preview, when I hover over, uh, nothing is occurring, so I'm not sure why. So let's see if I did that correctly. Uh, mouse in, uh, D-25 circle. Um, oh, yeah, so let's see. Okay, no, it works there. So the other thing we wanna do is bring the button to the front. So um, I think I can just move it here in the navigator to bring the button to the front. No, I'll just give it, uh, yeah, I'll give the button a position of relative and that should bring it to the front. Yeah, and a Z index. So yeah, I'll set the button to relative and give it a Z index of like five. So it's in front of the circle. Yeah, there we go. So we wanna bring that button in front of the circle as well um, so that the interaction can occur. Um, if we didn't have the interaction, the circle would just be behind the button, which might look okay here if the button is transparent. So if I go into the navigator and I delete the mouse hover interaction. Yeah, we can click on the button and the circle appears behind it. Um, yeah, that could work as well, but let me add a color to the button and see how that looks. Uh, so let me add like a blue background. Yeah, so that's, that's not bad. I mean, it depends what you're going for, but I just wanted to showcase that you wanna be aware of this circle blocking other elements. I kind of like the effect of the button being transparent. Um, yeah, we'll make the button transparent and we'll add the interaction to the button. So it adds kind of an interesting effect um, to, yeah, to the, uh, the element. Okay, so there we go. So it just disappears when we hover over it and we can select the button. All right, looks good. So I just wanted to cover that really quick. Um, yeah, I think I, I've covered it enough. If, you, if you're hovering over a link, you wanna make sure that the circle isn't covering it. You can either work with the Z index to bring the link to the front or have the, the element kind of disappear. So here you scale to have it disappear. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the, the cursor follow on mouse move. Um, we did play, we did remove with, yeah, we did remove the cursor uh, on the body, so we just have the circle, uh, but you could have the cursor and the circle, and um, yeah, and then we just worked with the the view mouse move and viewport, and we moved the circle on the x and y axis. Um, yeah, so you could play with the circle. I'll, I could add like a blur effect to the circle, make it kind of interesting, so that it looks a bit blurry. Um, let me select it again and we'll make the blur like two pixels two pixels and we can make it uh, a bit larger maybe like uh, 50 by 50 so we have this really large circle um, in the viewport all right and it disappears when we hover over the button all right looks good that's kind of what cuberto did here or this cuberto website he has the uh that element disappearing as you hover over uh certain links and the other thing I'll show really quick, um, so I'll copy, yeah, I'll copy section uh, 25, I'll just copy it. So we have two sections 
and I'll delete everything in here. And yeah, so we just have the circle. So yeah, let me change the background color of this one. So I'll give it a combo class of two and I'll change the background color to blue. So we have two sections and notice that the cursor stays in both sections and that's because we set it to a position of fixed. Um, if the circle didn't have a position of fixed, so if I select the circle here and for the position set it to absolute and I scroll, we no longer see the, the element. So you wanna have it fixed so it stays within the viewport. So if the site has scrolling space, the cursor will show um, throughout the entire site. All right, yep, just wanted to go over that really quick. All right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction at number 25. The cursor follow on mouse move. Yeah, it was inspired by cuberto.com here. Um, and definitely, if, yeah, a few other sites have this example as well. All right, looks good. Yeah, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I went over, feel free to ask me in the comment section below or in the forum section for this video. So that's it for daily interaction number 25. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.